praise God. I can't help but to worship this morning. Can't help but to pray this morning. Can't help but to think that God really truly does have an awesome plan for our lives. What about you? He has an awesome plan for this church. And it's 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 beyond our comprehension, truly. It's beyond what we think or what we see. It's beyond anything we can imagine. It's amazing. It's really, it really is going to blow your mind when His plan comes to fruition. You, a lot of times we get this thing in our heads and we see a picture and we're like, wow, that's what it's going to look like. But I don't, you know, I don't believe we can comprehend what it's truly going to look like when the plans of God, when the plans of God manifest themselves and completely come to realization in our lives. Praise the Lord. How many are excited about God's master plan for your life? Man, I am. I'm very excited about God's master plan. As you can see, I kind of uh, took the liberty of decorating the stage a little bit. Got some maps up. You know, God has a God has a map for your life. God has a plan. He has a, a destination that He's trying to get you to, and He's got a destination in many different areas. Okay, but they all include Him. They all include surrendering to Him. And so, as we get into the Word today. As we open it up, I am excited. I'm telling you, you know, like I said, I don't know if I said this last week, but if I didn't, I'm telling you, this word is burning in my heart. This, this God's master plan. God's got plans, and <coughs> I hopefully, I hope this will speak to you today. I hope that this will lay that foundation for you today. And I want you to look at it in two different ways. Do I need to hear this for myself? Or do I need to be prepared to share it with somebody else? Amen? Okay, because honestly, isn't that what we're here for? We're here to get filled up so we can go be poured out. Okay, so let's get filled up this morning so we can go outside these doors, go into our workplaces, go to the places that we're at, and pour ourselves out for Jesus Christ. Sound good? Okay, praise God. If you have your Bibles, turn to Genesis this morning. Genesis. How many know God does things good? Man, when God does them, they're good. Amen? Okay, they're real good. How many of you know the only reason that God, something isn't good is because God's not involved or, some, or, a, or a human being messed it up? <laughs> okay? All right? That's what we need to understand this morning. If it's not good, it's not God's fault. Okay? Because everything that God does is good. Everything that He touches is good. Amen? Okay. Genesis chapter 2 is where we're going to be at to start this morning. Verse 15. It says this. The Lord placed the man in the garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. But the Lord God warned him. You may freely eat of the tree of every, of the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. Okay, has God just established a plan for Adam and Eve? Has he not? He's like, okay, here's what you're going to do. I'm going to place you right here, and you're going to be able to eat from any tree except one. Okay, the day you eat from that tree, you're going to die. Now, he didn't die physically, right? We know that. But something happened that day that brought death, not just to them, but to everyone. Right? And so here he is. Here's God's master plan. Hey, Adam, I want you to come in here and I want you to tend this garden. I want you to do this. I want you to take care of it. I want you to have freely of all the fruit of every tree in the garden. I want you to be able to sit next to the lion and pet them like they're your house cat. I want you to be at peace with everything. Think about that. Okay, there, we were at peace with everything before this happened, right? I mean, what, what greater plan? I mean, how, how many would like to have a lion as a pet? Okay, I would. Yes, that would be awesome. I always wanted a black panther myself. But, you know, so, but that would just be so cool, right? Yeah, you know, black is it's cool. Okay. But you see, what God did is he took man and he placed him in this place called paradise. Right? Paradise. And made it... 
to where he really, all he had to do was just go around and eat and, and, you know, take care of the garden every once in a while, you know, maybe trim a few bushes here and there. But he had a, he had a pretty good deal going on, did he not? A good plan. But again, if anything becomes not good, it's not God's fault, right? But then God doesn't even stop there, right? He doesn't stop there. He doesn't say, okay, Adam, this is what you get to do. He says, no, now, Adam, I've got, I've got even better things for you. I'm going to give you a wife. Wow, I just thought I'd get better amen than that. Come on, man, man, come on, where are you at, man? Come on, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you somebody to spend this time with, right? And so here he is. He's in the garden. He's got a woman. He's got this. And then to add to it, he says, be fruitful, multiply. Okay? God's got a good plan. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. Y'all are going to catch up with me here pretty soon. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, amen, Pastor. All right. <laughs> but then, you know, even as good as the plan is, you know, can I just tell you this? Sometimes the plan is working itself out in our lives, but we can still mess it up. Can, did you know that? Man, the plan can be so amazing. I mean, we're walking this plan. We're going through this plan like, man, my life is good. Man, this is awesome. I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean but the, it's just great. I look around. I got my family. I got this. I got that. Man, my job's going great. Everything's going well. And there's one common denominator why your life is going well. It's because you keep God in the center. Right? And then we wonder, we wonder where we get to this place where things get derailed. Right? Things got derailed. Oh, well, why? what happened? Why was, this, why was this derailed? Well, it's because we took our eyes off of God. Right? You see, I want to talk to you this morning about the train. There's a train. Amen? There's a train that's going to take us to the destination we need to go. But if you haven't gotten on the train, you're not going to get there. Right? If you haven't gotten on the train, okay, the train is going to leave the station one day. Amen? The train is going to leave the station one day, but you have to get on the train because that's God's plan. If you don't do it God's way, then you're not going to get to the destination He wants you to go. Right? So God's got a plan. And it's a good plan. I'm telling you, it's good. Okay, if you're not convinced that God's plan is good, I hope you're convinced by the time we're done. If not, by the time we're done with the series. Not today. I hope you're convinced by today. But you know, here's what happens. Here's what happens with God's plan, right? Okay, God's plan is working itself out, man. We're, we're doing things. We're doing, we're keeping God at the center. We're praying, we're seeking Him. We're, we're reading our Bibles, we're getting the Word in us so that we know how to live. And we're living it out. We're, we're putting our faith into action. We're doing these things. But you know what happens? Okay, I, I just picture Adam and Eve. Adam going up to Eve and saying, hey, Eve, you want to go for a walk around the forbidden tree every day around lunchtime? And just kind of just walk around it. What do you think, Eve? Do you think that sounds like a good idea to you? You know, because it's such a beautiful tree. Let's just walk around it every day. You know how you start kind of towing? You know, kind of towing that kind of, oh, well, you know, that's, that's a nice tree. I like that tree. And then you kind of, you know, you get a little bit closer every day. You're like, wow, the bark on that's really soft. How is that? That's nice, bro. Well, man, look at the leaves on those. Look at the shape of the leaves. That's very different than the rest of the trees of the garden. Then as you keep on walking around this thing, you just keep on thinking, wow. Ooh, man, now the fruit. <laughs> man, that, that fruit looks way better than anything else we've been eating around here. Hey, God's really keeping something from us. Right? Isn't that what happens is with the plan of God? Okay, we're walking, we're doing, and then all of a sudden, there's this temptation that comes along. And we start giving it our attention. 
we start kind of walking around that temptation. We start looking at it. We start getting a little closer to it. We start thinking, oh, man, that looks pretty good. And then the next thing you know, the train has been derailed and everybody dies. No, I'm just kidding. Okay? But that's what happened with Adam and Eve. All right? I'm telling you. That's what happened with Adam and Eve. The train derailed and everybody died. Right? Now let's look at Genesis chapter 3. Starting in verse 1, it says, The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, did God, really, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Of course we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. The woman replied, it's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. You won't die, the serpent replied. Now, wait a minute. Let's stop right there. Is the serpent speaking God's plans? Okay. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. Was that God's plan for Adam and Eve? No. The woman was convinced. Okay, the woman was convinced. Why? Not because God had convinced her, but because her own eyes and what the enemy had told her had convinced her. Okay, how, how many of you guys know there's things in this world that are going to try to convince you to do what's wrong to get you to derail? Amen. It says the woman was convinced she saw the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. She took some of the fruit and ate it, then she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. At that moment their eyes were open and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness, at their nakedness. So they sewed big leaves together to cover themselves. But you see, it doesn't mention anything here when Eve is approached by the serpent of Eve getting up and walking somewhere, does it? What was Eve doing? What was Adam doing? Well, I have a feeling they were just kind of hanging out around the tree. So, Adam... What do you think? That fruit looks pretty good. Yeah, Eve, I know, but God told us not to. Yeah, but I was talking to a serpent. <laughs> and, you know, he said that what God said would happen really wouldn't happen. So maybe it wouldn't be as bad as God said it would be. What do you think? Well, it doesn't say that Adam reached for the fruit. But it does say he took it from Eve's hand, doesn't it? And because this happened, everybody died. The train derailed and everybody died. You see, we've talked about this before. Eve had her two planes, two directions, didn't she? She had her two planes. She had a choice. She could hear the plan of the serpents. Or she could hear the plan of Almighty God. She had a choice of what plan to take, what plan to listen to, what plan to follow through with, didn't she? Can I just tell you, you've got a choice today. Okay? God has placed a plan in front of you. The enemy has placed a plan in front of you. Your own flesh also has a plan, right? But you have a choice. What, cho what plan are you going to choose day in and day out? This isn't a one-time choice. This is a daily choice saying, God, I choose you. I choose your way. I choose your plan. But instead, she chose herself and she chose disobedience and rebellion towards God. This was her choice. And then we talked last week about how our decisions don't just affect me. And we see how Adam and Eve and their decision to do this has affected every person ever to be born after them. Why? Because before they did this, the sin nature was not in them. But after they did this, the sin nature was now inside of them. And that sin nature was now passed on from generation to generation to generation. 
And now, every person was doomed for death. How many of you guys have ever gone on a trip and you had a plan B? Or a plan A1, let's say A1. Yeah, that sounds better, right? Okay, plan A1. You know, you were on that trip and you, you were going down the road and you took a right turn where you should have taken a left turn. <laughs> Plans just changed, didn't they? Okay, now, instead of being at Aunt Polly's, okay, at 2 o'clock, Okay, now the plan is to hopefully make it there by four, right? And so, but the plan is still intact. You're just going to have to go, it's just going to take a little bit longer. It's just going to, you're going to have to get turned around and go right back the right direction, right? I did that a few times before, gone west instead of east. Man, I, I hate that. I'm starting to get my direction though, so that's good. But you see, God didn't leave us at a place, and I'm so thankful. God did not leave us at a place where Adam and Eve say, and he said, He didn't walk away and say, I'm done with y'all. Right? He didn't leave us there. No. You see, God had a plan. And that plan was foiled by Adam and Eve. But then God said, You know what? Just because Adam and Eve did that doesn't mean everybody else should suffer for it. Just because they made a bad choice doesn't mean everybody else should have to, have to deal with their bad choices. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I've got a new plan. I've got another plan. This is, a, this is a great plan, right? Matter of fact, it starts in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. <coughs> if you want to find out what doing your own plan can get you, um, you can read... The 14, 15, and 16. And you can see, women, you may, uh, you know, I know you women, it wasn't ever your plan for it to be so painful to go through childbirth, right? Okay? But, you know, you can thank Adam and Eve for that. All right. It says in this, it says, verse 15, and I will cause hostility between you and the woman. He's talking to the serpent. It says, in the word God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed. More than all the animals, domestic and wild, you will crawl on your belly, groveling in the dust as long as you live. And I will cause hostility between you and the woman, between your offspring and her offspring. And he will strike your head, and you will, and you will strike his heel. Okay, this is the first prophecy that Jesus is on his way, right? Yeah, Jesus is on his way. This is the first prophecy in. In the Old Testament that Jesus is on his way. Jesus is, was coming. Why? To step on the serpent. Right? To show the serpent, hey, you, you may have won the little battle right there by convincing Eve that it was okay. But I win the war, buddy. Right? Amen. So God has, had another plan. God, God said, okay. God puts a plan in place to redeem us and restore us back to himself. But how many of you know, just like we mentioned last week, that by doing our own thing, it can divert or delay the plans of God? How many know 4,000 years later, here comes Jesus? 4,000 years later. Why? Because Adam and Eve chose their own way. But it begins. God gave us a promise. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. He gave us a promise in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. That a child is to be born to us. He gave us a promise in Micah chapter 5 and verse 2. That out of Bethlehem that child would come. You see this takes us back to the plans of God. Plans for good and not disaster. Right? That's God's plan all along. God's plan for you is for good. Right? Okay, it was for good when he placed Adam and Eve in the garden. He said, this is a good thing. I've got good plans for you. Just stay away from that tree. I've got good plans. And then when Adam and Eve, they messed up and they did that, he, he didn't leave us like that. He said, you know what? I've still got good plans for you. Right? And he proved it. Did he not prove it that he wants good things for us? That he wants good plans to come to pass in our lives? Yes, he proved it. By 
by sending Jesus Christ. Right? He proved, he, by sending his only begotten son, he proved that he had greater plans for us than the plans of death. His plans were for life. And they messed it up. But in Isaiah chapter 53, man, this is good. Normally we always focus, when we go to Isaiah 53, we always focus on a few verses. But man, I tell you what, this will light a fire in me right here. At least I hope it will. <laughs> Starting at verse 10. It says, but it was the Lord's good plan. Did everybody say that today. Good plan. Good plan. Okay, it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Did you hear that? It was the Lord's good plan to crush Jesus and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. And when he sees all that is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied and because of his experience, my righteous servant will make it possible for many to be counted righteous, for he will bear all their sins. Oh, church, that's good news right there. I will give them the honors of a victorious soldier because he exposed himself to death. He was counted among the rebels. He bore the sins of many and interceded for the rebels. This is God's plan right here. Amen? It was the Lord's good plan to put Jesus on this earth. It was the Lord's good plan because he saw you were hopeless, helpless, without any ounce of hope in your life. And he said, you know what? It's the Lord's good plan to crush my son instead of crush them. Wow. Wow. If that doesn't say, God, I love you, I love you, I don't know what else does. It was God's plan to put him in your place. In my place. That's a good plan. For me. Not such a good plan for Jesus. But man, it was a good plan for me. But he doesn't stop there. He says, And the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. He'll make it possible for many to be counted righteous. When was the last time you thanked Jesus for his righteousness? Because that was his plan. That you would be righteous in the Father's eyes. That's his plan. His plan was for him to become sin. For us, instead of us having to pay the penalty for our own sin. Right? See again, in Genesis 1.31, God got done created all, creating all things and he looked at it and he said, man, this is good. This is good. And you know, now he can look at you as a child of the king. He can look at you as, as a child of God. And he can see the blood of Jesus Christ over your life. He can see that you're counted righteous because of him. And he can look at you and can say, wow, this is good. This is good. This is really, really good. You see, it went from this is good to there is none righteous, no, not one. To your righteousness is as filthy rags. That's what you look like to me. To now I count you as righteous because of Jesus Christ. And because you've accepted his righteousness. His salvation. His forgiveness. See, I, I wanted to, we talked last week about God's plans for good and not disaster. You see... Anytime we build something, 
We have to lay the foundation first, don't we? Anytime we do that, we have to lay the foundation first. We have to make sure that it's strong, right? When they poured the slab for this, for this building, they had to make sure the concrete was poured right. They had to make sure there were seams every so often so it wouldn't crack and become brittle, right? They had to do the things necessary to do. They had to lay that foundation correctly. Otherwise, the walls would fall, around, fall down around us if the foundation wasn't laid. Can I just say this? God's master plan for you begins right here. Now, I know you may be thinking, well, Pastor, I'm saved. I know I'm saved. That's good. I'm glad you know you're saved. I'm glad you know Jesus Christ. But there's people that don't know they're saved. There's people that haven't gotten on the train yet. Right? There's people that are still inside the station thinking that they are living it up and it's good. Right? But you see, the train is going one direction. It's going towards one person. And that person is Jesus Christ. That person is Jesus Christ. That's where the train is heading. The train, it, I'm telling you, the only way to heaven, the only way to get to the Father is one on one track. It's the track of Jesus. Right? There's no other way. There's no other way. And so God, in His graciousness, in His mercy, in His great love for us, he made a way, didn't he? He made a way. He made a way for us to have a foundation to be able to build this thing called life, right? He made a way for us to go in the right direction, to not get lost. He gave us a map so we could know where we're going. He gave us these things. Because, why? Because he loves you deeply. He could have left you just the way Adam and Eve left you. But that wasn't his plan. His plan is way better than that. His plan is good. In Romans chapter 5, in verse 6, it says, When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Did you hear that? When you are utterly helpless. Anybody been there? Anybody there right now? Maybe we're helpless in other ways, right? We need Jesus, don't we? Now most people would not be willing to die for an upright person. Though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. Right? But God showed His great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Okay, here's what I want us to understand. We're all sinners. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. Okay, Romans 3.23 declares it. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. Every single one of us. None of us are exempt from that. Every single one of us has a sin nature inside of us. And every single one of us needs the forgiveness of Jesus Christ and the righteousness of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ for God to see His Son or His daughter. Right? And then it says this. This is, this is awesome, church. This is God's plan. Okay? The wages of sin is death. Okay? You want to keep on sinning? You're going to experience death. That's the plan you get to receive. That's the plan that's going to be hand out, handed out to you. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Which plan is better? Which, which thing is better? That's a choice that we all have to make, isn't it? We have, to make, again, we have to make that choice daily. Do I want God's plans to come forth in my life? Do I want God's plans to unfold in my life? You know, I'll tell you something. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying my life's perfect by any means, but I like my life. Sometimes I feel guilty because I feel like my life is so good and I think, man, I, it, should, it should be this good, right? 
Sometimes I think that way. But then I think, then going through this and studying this, and I think, this is what God wants for me. God wants good and not disaster. God wants to give me a future and a hope. God wants to give me a rich and satisfying life. God wants to give me abundance. Right? God wants this for me. And it hasn't just happened just because that's what he wants. It's happened because I've made choices along the way. I've made choices to die every single day. I've made choices to, to come closer to him. I've made choices to forget about my plans, to leave my plans behind and say, Okay, God, your plans are now my plans. But I've made those choices on a daily basis, one day at a time, one choice at a time. And because I've made those choices, it's caused me to get to where I'm at today. And it's good. Not because of me, but because of Him. If I went my own way, it wouldn't be good. I've been there, I've done that, it wasn't good. Do I still make bad choices every once in a while? Yes. Do I still pay the consequences? Yes. Do I delay God's plan for my life? Yes. Do sometimes in my life, does it not look good? Yes. Why? Because I mess up. Not because God isn't good. God is good. I'm telling you, if God did not care about you, He would not have done what He did for you. If God did not want good for your life, He wouldn't have went as far as sending His only Son to die for you. He could have left you just as Adam and Eve left you. And me. But he didn't. He didn't. He chose to go beyond that and give us something good. And that something good is salvation. That something good is knowing Jesus Christ. That something good is having a relationship with Jesus. And the amazing thing about God's perfect, absolutely flawless plan is it's free. It's free. Okay, yeah, it's going to cost you your life. Yeah, it's going to cost you some of your, your, your own pleasures that you used to have. It's going to cost you some things, yes. It's going to cost you your... Because I want you to understand something. See, I, I've seen people... Man, I've seen people boo-hoo at the front of a church and walk out the door and never change. You see, if your life doesn't look differently after you accepted Jesus, you didn't accept Jesus. I, I just, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, that, that's just the truth. Life has to change. Jesus doesn't come, Jesus, when Jesus comes in, he's ready to remodel Okay, he's ready right away. He did, he's not waiting another day. He's ready to do some things. He's ready for you to make different choices. He's ready for you to spend your time differently. He's ready for you to invest in your family differently. He's ready for you to, to talk to people differently. Right? That's what he's ready for. And if that hasn't happened, if there hasn't been... Now, it can start small. It can start small, but you've got to be continually changing for Jesus. Right? In order for God's plans... God's plans to come to pass, there has to be continual change. And for people that don't like change, that's hard, isn't it? But there has to be continual change. I believe that 2016 is going to be a year of change here. A year of change. I believe God's got some powerful things in store for us, some things to teach us, some, some new things to embrace. This is a year of change. And I hope you're ready to change for Jesus. God has laid out a perfect plan. But again, it involves transformation. If we're not willing to transform, we're not willing to be changed each and every day, not willing to die more and more each and every day, His plan can't happen.
His can't, plan can't be completely fulfilled in your life. You know that person that we're praying for and we're saying God send somebody in their path so that they can share Jesus with them? That prayer may change this year. God may say, I'm sending you. What if? What if he's sending you? So I don't know if you, maybe you're here today and you're thinking, man, Pastor, I'm timid. I don't know if I can share. I just don't know if I can share the good news of Jesus Christ. I get so worried that I'm going to do it wrong. Well, as your pastor, I understand that. And I'm going to share with you right now how to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Okay, first of all, if people don't understand that they have sin, if they've done, that they've done wrong, then why do they need to be saved from something? Amen? That's why in Romans 3.23 it does say... We all have sinned. Everybody. Nobody's exempt from it. Everybody has sinned and fallen short of God's glory. Okay, that's the bad news. Okay, you can say that. That's the bad news. Okay, because it is bad news. Right? Everybody's sinned. But then, you get to give good news from here on out. Okay? For the most part. You get to turn to Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. And share with them that while we were still sinners, while we have, were in sin, while we were walking in this world as sinners, while people were in Jesus, they were walking through the world as sinners, they were spitting in his face, they were pushing the crown. Okay, you don't have to go into that much detail. Okay? <laughs> but while we were still sinners, Jesus chose to die for us. He chose to become our Savior. He chose to forgive us for all the sin we had committed. And then, here is the wonderful thing. See, I want you to understand the difference between a sinful life and a life lived for Jesus. In Romans 6.23, it says this. The wages of sin is death. See, that's the path you were on. That's the, that's the plan that you were, you were fulfilling. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Which one sounds better to you? I don't know about, I mean, maybe some people say, oh, I don't know, maybe if, if somebody, true, I mean, Jesus and eternal life in one hand, death in the other, which one are you going to choose? I mean, come on. So, so we say that it's our choice. It's our choice, right? It's our choice. We can choose the wages of sin or we can choose Jesus. And then you turn over to Romans chapter 10. See, this is all in the Bible. I'm not giving you anything new. This has all been written for a lot of years. Romans chapter 10, verse 9, and it says that if you confess with your mouth, okay, you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, and you believe in your heart that He is Lord. And you also believe that God raised him from the dead. Okay, that he's alive today. Then you are saved. Is that hard? Is that hard? That's, that's easy, right? And so then you say, would you like to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior? So you can have eternal life. And you can start a new journey. I can, 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 I, can I just tell you something? God's got good for you and not disaster. And I guarantee you, if they're living a life of sin, all they've experienced is disaster. See, church, God's got a master plan. That master plan has become fruitful in your life. But it's because it become fruitful in the lives around you. But I'm still going to give the opportunity. Anybody that doesn't know Jesus today, I'm telling you, if this is the foundation, if you don't get this right, okay, where we go from here on out, it's not going to work. 
Okay, if you don't get the foundation laid that Jesus Christ is the Savior, okay, then you're just going to start building on sand. Okay, and you know what happens to sand when it shifts. The walls come tumbling down, right? So, we're going to give that opportunity this morning. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Everybody bow their head and close their eyes. We're going, to, we're going to give people the opportunity. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior today, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior today, Jesus wants to save you. Jesus wants to love you. But you have to choose to let Him in. You have to make that choice. Jesus wants to give you eternal life. Jesus wants to forgive you for your sins. But it's your choice. So if there is somebody here today that says, Pastor, I've been living my own plans. I've been doing it my own way. And today I realize that I've sinned. That I've fallen short of your glory. Today I realize I'm a sinner. And I need a Savior. If that's you today, I just want you to stick your hand up. If you're saying today, you know what? Today I realize I'm a sinner. And I need a Savior. I realize I've sinned because all have sinned. All have fallen short of the glory of God. And I need a Savior who is Jesus Christ. If that's you today, I just want you to throw your hand in the air. There's only one way. Only one way. It's not through any other religion. It's not through any other relationship. Jesus Christ is the only way. And if you don't choose Jesus, you can't get on the train to the destination He wants to take you. I'm going to ask one more time. If there's anybody here today that says, I need Jesus Christ as my Savior. I just want you to stick your hand up in the air, then you can put it back down. You stick your hand in the air saying, I need Jesus as my Savior. Okay, I'm going I'm to say a prayer. And if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior right now, now's the time to pray that prayer. Now's the time to accept Jesus Christ. Now's the time for change. To happen in your life. But remember church. I said. If you say this prayer. And nothing changes. You didn't meet Jesus. You just said a prayer. So this is the time to meet Jesus. This is the time to say. Jesus I surrender. So pray with me now. Jesus. Forgive me. Cleanse me from my sin. Wash me, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. Lord, I surrender my life to you right now. I want, to, I want your plans to become my plans. I want your ways to become my ways. I trust you, Lord. I believe, Jesus, that you died on the cross for me. I believe, Jesus, that you rose from the dead. And I accept the sacrifice that was made for my sins. In Jesus' name. If you said that prayer for the first time today, come see me after service. We believe in discipleship here. That's something else that's changing. 
in 2016. We want to see discipleship become more in this church. Church, I just want you to understand God's got a master plan for you. If your train is derailed, guess what? It can be put back on the tracks. If you've made a bad choice and your train has gotten off the track, you can ask for forgiveness. You can repent. Okay, it means repentance. That means, you know what? My train derailed because of this. I don't want to do it again. Because church, we're on a journey. And for some, that journey starts today. We're on a journey to build something. We're on a journey to build it strong. We're not just building anything. We're building a life in Jesus Christ. That means more than everything. Father, I thank you today. For every person in this congregation, Father. Lord, if there's anybody in this service today, Father God, that would say, my train is derailed. God, I pray, Father God, that they would come running to you today, Lord Jesus. They would come running to you, Jesus. And they would surrender their hearts, surrender their lives. They would say, Lord, I need you. I need you, Jesus. Forgive me, Lord, for thinking that my way was the best way. Forgive me for thinking that my wisdom was greater than your wisdom. Forgive me for being wise in my own eyes. Lord, my train is derailed. And I'm running back to you, Jesus. I'm running back to you, Jesus. If that's you today, just let it know. I'm running back to you, Jesus. I'm running back to you, Jesus. I'm getting on the train, Lord. And I'm going where you're taking me. Whatever that is. Wherever that is. Let the salvation of Jesus Christ rise up within you today and let it continue to change you and make you everything that He wants you to be. Let His plans come to pass in your life. You won't be sorry that you trusted Him. Praise God. Father, thank you. Thank you for making another plan and sending Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for eternal life. Thank you. I love you. We love you as a church, Lord. Thank you, God, for what you want to do in and through us. We love you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Praise God. I ask again, is everybody excited about God's plan for your life? Yes. Good. Go forth and make good choices. Make God choices. And know that his plans can unfold in your life. God bless y'all. Love you.